Okay, see, I gotta give you a real good example of folk art good versus folk art evil. And I'm gonna use these cattle here as a for example. Yeah, you see how close these guys, see, I, I shepherd these guys every day and they trust me. I take them to the green grass pastures and water and, and uh, you know, I can just walk out among them and mess around them. They know who I am. And so, they they trust me. They have a, we have a relationship together. They walk around with me, I walk around with them. Well, the same way happens with an artist and his artwork and the people who buy his artwork. There's a relationship going on there. They know that, you know, with an artist, they know that the people that buy an artist's work, they, first of all, have some kind of, uh, they like his, they like the work. The thing about art is, that makes it easy, is you know whether or not you like to look at it or not. And they kind of, have a rapport in that department, but they also know that that artist is going to be there, and that uh, he's not going to quit, and that they know that when they buy his work, that you know he's not he's not turning it in. He's going to continue to go, and then every day or you know every year, that artist is going to produce something that's a, like a like with these cattle, a, a greener pasture, a fresh pasture that they can uh, eat in and uh, forage and, and enjoy. Uh, you know, so, and, but the difference uh, with that is for Folk Art Evil is, you know, um, what, would, what would be a good difference for that? Hey, Sleepy. Come on. It's time to go to a greener pasture. Wake up. Because it's it's so um, it, it's it's got you. It's you're 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 contemplating it. You know you have to speak their language too. They gotta understand what you're telling them. So not every artist for everybody. Hey. Mm. by developing work and developing several bodies of work and talking about things. Come on. And see how they just come flocking in. And anytime you you look at something and you look at it and you look at it and you contemplate it, you're engaged with it. And that's how you build a relationship with a picture or with a piece of artwork. <sighs> well, the best example of folk art evil I could probably uh, sling by you using them would be, uh, you know, if I had a responsibility to be out here for them every day and make sure they had fresh green and fresh water I would instead I'd go lay up all night with some hoe bags and drink my fill of natty lights and red stripes and, and uh, woodchuck cider and get all hammered and, and lay up with a headache meanwhile the hot burning sun is coming out and these guys don't have any food or water and they dry up and they die and they have a horrible life to the patron the collector, um, you know, he's got to know the artist, and the artist has got to know him, uh, or her, uh, and, and there has to be a rapport there with the, uh, the work, and, and, uh, there has to be, uh, consistency, uh, and consistency runs in a variety of different flavors, they can make the same kind of work all the time, or they can just make different works all the time um, it's not something you're just gonna bow out and lay down you know you've got you've been 
you have that uh, that niche in the back of your ass, and you just you know you got to continuously scratch it. You you're perplexed by it. You you uh, you want to decipher how it was made and what it's saying and why this color is there and that color is over there and that line's bigger than that line and this and and how when you stand back and look at it it all makes this this grand piece of art you know you want it you want to own it I'm going to give you another quick example of the artist patron relationship you know a lot of times the the patrons are just doing what they do in the world and they they're going along and don't really know you know what's happening. The artist is kind of the shepherd, you know, and he's got to get them their attention and, and funnel them and channel them and direct them on what's happening and where what they need to pay attention to, where they need to go. Uh, you know, because it's always been that way, and even in a pride-filled society such as the, the nation I live in, uh, and even the state, everybody knows it all. You can't tell anybody anything. Still, the artist has always been the guy out there saying, uh, and it's not always been for good, keep that in mind. Uh, there hasn't always been pioneers for, uh, crap, what was the name of that movement? The Renaissance? There hasn't always been pioneers for the Renaissance. You know, there were, before that, there was what was called the Dark Ages, or I don't even know why they call it that, but they did. I, you know, uh, whatever so uh, you know there there's always someone saying come on hip. let's go let's go and you got to push them up you know or else they'll get lost out here and fall behind and so you got to kind of direct them and keep them moving keep them motivated hey come on let's go let's go hip 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 and push them along you know cuz People in the majority, you know what I've discovered most about, especially rural agricultural farm owners, landowners, oil men, few of them can tell you what an original painting looks like and what one of those fake uh, little clear coat brushed poster boards that were circulated back at the end of the you know, like the 50s and 40s, there was a whole bunch of circulating fake. They would put clear coat on it with a brush and, you know, use brush strokes with a clear coat over like a fake poster print to give it texture. And then they would sell that off as complete full gazes. You know, forget about it. You have to see, and, and so these guys have all these paintings. I've been to these places and I've seen them. And these guys are... They're sitting on millions and millions of dollars. They got mineral rights, but they think they're holding on to some some uh, dead gummy Remingtons or something like that. Originals? Hell no. The frames are worth more than that. So you know, part of it's education. And right, like right now, I'm educating these cattle that they need to push on up the hill so we can get to the greener pastures. And you got an artist has to do that, and he's, it, it takes a lot of grit to stay in that because it's depressing. You know, it's a lot of, it takes a long time for them to trust you, for them to turn around and start walking to you, well, with you, and, and believe in that, uh, oh, okay. And, you know, the mentality of humans are a lot like these kind of, oh, they're real slow, and they, hey, where are we going? Well, uh, you know, and that's exactly how it is uh, when you're trying to build understanding in the arts. If you're uh, really going to get a good bunch to come together, you're going to have to have a really good cattle call. One that they'll be able to follow for a long time.